Hey, y'all. Today, I've got a mini-sode for you that is completely out of left field. You know, normally we do dark history and haunted places and stuff like that, but ever since we started making these little minis, Brienne has been begging me to agree to do this one subject. So here we are. Now, this particular tale starts with an aquatic plant known as the water hyacinth. This plant's a native to the Amazon basin, but if you've ever been down to the bayou, you've seen these things floating across the flat water on thick mats of dark green leaves with beautiful blue and purple petals. Well, the hyacinth was introduced to American waterways in the late 19th century, and it can now be found all over the warmer regions of the South, from Texas to Florida and beyond, but that's not a good thing. This plant is an invasive species that'll dominate and destroy habitats where it resides. The water hyacinth seeds spread by wind, allowing it to multiply like crazy. In fact, one single plant can end up covering an acre in only a single growing season, allowing it to completely overwhelm bodies of water, blocking the sun and choking out native species. And to make matters worse, the water hyacinth is toxic to humans and many animals. Over the years, there have been a number of different ways that water management and environmental organizations have all attempted to control this invasive species. Everything from spraying them with chemicals to actually developing boats that scoop them up out of the waterways. But back in the early 20th century, there was one that today just seems crazy, and it involved the hippopotamus. In 1910, Robert Broussard, a Louisiana member of the United States House of Representatives, introduced a bill that he believed would address several problems that his local district in New Iberia was actively struggling with. First, the problem of water hyacinth taking over local waterways. And the second was the country's ongoing meat shortage. This particular time was one of peak immigration, and cities' populations were exploding, as was the demand for meat, particularly beef. Although the meat industry was growing as fast as it could, it still wasn't enough to keep up with the demands, as mass production had yet to be invented, and the overgrazing of pasture lands left the number of beef cattle low. So Broussard introduced H.R. 23621, which is now remembered is the American Hippo Bill. According to the proposal, the introduction of hippopotami into Louisiana bayous would turn unproductive swamps in the South into ranches of free-range hippos. Not only would the animal be able to feast on the invasive water hyacinth, but the hippos would then be harvested for the country's food supply with what was called lake bacon, or lake cow bacon. Surprisingly, the bill was met with enthusiastic support from then-former President Theodore Roosevelt, an active game hunter and adventurer, as well as respected institutions like the New York Times and the Washington Post. Even the U.S. Department of Agriculture supported the bill, supplying the official estimate that a free-range hippo herd would likely produce up to a million tons of meat per year. As the bill traveled through Congress, it picked up steam thanks in part to the support of two men who had spent years in the African bush. One was Frederick Russell Burnham, an adventurer who's called the King of Scouts and described as a, quote, man totally without fear. Some say he was even the inspiration for Indiana Jones. With Broussard, Burnham formed the New Food Supply Society to import useful African wildlife to solve this serious meat shortage. They then met with Frederick Fritz Schubert Dusquen, an expert on the subject. Fritz was not only a South African big game hunter and journalist, but also Burnham's sworn enemy. He even had orders to kill Burnham years earlier during the Second Boer War, but their feelings were put aside in favor of the proposed business, and Fritz took on the role as head of the New Food Supply Society. 
when word spread of the unique idea being tossed around, the country became so intrigued by the idea of lake bacon that Lippincott's monthly magazine included an ode to the hippo and its possibilities. Quote, This animal, homely as a steamroller, is the embodiment of salvation. Peace, plenty, and contentment lie before us, and a new life with new experiences, new opportunities, new vigor, new romance folded in that golden future, when the meadows and the bayous of our southern lands shall swarm with herds of hippopotami. Ultimately, the American Hippo Bill failed to make it through Congress rejected by a single vote, an outcome not totally surprising given that we don't currently have hippos dominating the wetlands. And although Robert Broussard kept the concept on his political agenda until his death in 1918, the bayous of Louisiana likely lucked out from this failure, as the common hippopotamus is not only the third largest land animal alive today, but it's also extremely aggressive, unpredictable, and highly territorial. In fact, it's on top of the list of deadliest animals in Africa. So would the American Hippo Bill have helped address the water hyacinth problem that still plagues the South today? Possibly. But the question is what sort of problems would it have also introduced? Personally, I prefer a bayou filled with alligators. My name is Brandon Schecksneider, and you've been listening to Southern Gothic. Southern Gothic is an independently produced podcast created by siblings Brianne and Brandon Schecksneider with the support of listeners like you. If you enjoyed this podcast and would like to receive even more content, including ad-free episodes, head over to our Patreon page today. The link is in the show notes. Lucky Lady Shacks.